Introduction to needle guides for use with ultrasound guided peripheral nerve block. This video is designed to provide a brief background of some of the challenges of ultrasound guided regional anesthesia and to demonstrate how needle guides can be used to assist clinicians with needle alignment during peripheral nerve blocks. Although clinicians new to ultrasound guided peripheral nerve blocks can greatly benefit from using needle guides to assist with needle alignment, even experts may utilize needle guides to assist them in more challenging cases. Due to the intuitive advantages of using ultrasound for regional anesthesia procedures, the past several years have seen an explosion in interest in using this technology. As more safety data becomes available, it's possible or even probable that the use of ultrasound could become the standard of care in regional anesthesia procedures. Unfortunately, although the use of ultrasound seems easy, I believe that it takes considerable training and practice to be able to use the technology to its fullest benefits. Fortunately, needle guides address one of the most significant problems with using ultrasound guided procedures, and that's visualizing the needle and its tip at all times during the procedure. Since its first published use in 1978, when Doppler localization was used to perform a supraclavicular block, the use of ultrasound in regional anesthesia has rapidly gained widespread adoption. There is mounting evidence that ultrasound improves procedure times, reduces required local anesthetic dose, aids in identification of anatomic variations, and can improve safety. Many of these advantages depend upon the ability to use ultrasound to identify the location of the needle tip at all times during a procedure. Although ultrasound can be a valuable tool during the performance of peripheral nerve blocks, it can be a challenging skill to learn. Ultrasound allows visualization of the nerve target, surrounding structures, and the needle. Visualization of the nerve can allow targeted placement of the needle tip and local anesthetic infiltration around the nerve. Identification of the surrounding structures will help the clinician avoid needle placement in or through unwanted structures. Both of these benefits can only be realized if the clinician can use ultrasound to identify relevant anatomical structures and the needle tip location. We begin by discussing in-plane needle guidance where the needle is advanced into the tissue in line with the plane of the ultrasound beam. The beam emitted by the transducer is only a few millimeters thick. If the needle is perfectly aligned inside the beam, the entire needle will be visible on the ultrasound image. If the needle is outside of the beam, the needle will not be visible on the ultrasound image. If a needle is advanced into the tissue and is not in alignment with the ultrasound beam, it will not be visible on the image. Many clinicians attempt to infer the position of the needle shaft and tip based on tissue movement as the needle is advanced, even though the needle shaft and tip are not clearly visible. Unfortunately, this is very unreliable, and the needle may be quite distant from the observed tissue movement. In this example, the needle is advanced, but is not in plane with the ultrasound beam. With an adjustment of the transducer, the beam is brought into alignment with the needle shaft, and the entire needle becomes visible on the ultrasound image. Another slight movement of the transducer, and the needle is no longer visible. Advancing a needle without knowing the location of the needle tip can lead to passage of the needle through or into undesired structures. The ultrasound beam is only a few millimeters thick. Sometimes the needle crosses the ultrasound beam plane, and only a portion of the needle remains within the beam and is visible on the ultrasound image. Unfortunately, this can give the clinician a false sense of where the needle tip is located. At the beginning of this ultrasound clip, try and identify the location of the needle tip. As the clip is advanced, the ultrasound transducer is rotated and the entire needle shaft and tip are in the plane of the beam and are now visible on the image. At the beginning of the clip, only the portion of the shaft that has crossed the ultrasound beam plane is visible on the ultrasound image. The needle tip appears to be located at the position of the arrow. With an adjustment of the transducer, note how the needle tip is deeper in the tissue than first inferred from earlier in the clip. By now, you should be convinced of the importance of advancing the needle in the plane of the ultrasound beam, so it is visible in the ultrasound image. But how is this accomplished? The needle entry point must be in plane with the ultrasound beam, and then the needle advance in the plane of the beam. 
this can be difficult to accomplish, particularly if the clinician is not able to look directly along the plane of the ultrasound beam and shaft of the needle. Aligning the needle and transducer can be difficult, as has been demonstrated by several studies. It is important to realize that even experienced clinicians may occasionally have difficulty aligning the needle and transducer. Needle guides were designed to address this problem. They can be used to assist the clinician with introducing the needle entry point in the same plane as the ultrasound beam and continued advancement of the needle in plane. In a study by Ball et al., utilization of a needle guide during an ultrasound-guided procedure improved needle visualization compared to a freehand technique. Significantly more consistent visualization of the needle during the procedure supports the potential of needle guides to improve patient safety by reducing the incidence of inadvertent punctures of adjacent structures. Additional studies have shown the use of needle guides improve needle visualization and reduce procedure times, and thus may increase patient safety. Practical Guide on How to Use Needle Guides The components of an open channel-based needle guide system include a non-disposable bracket that attaches to the ultrasound transducer, a transducer cover for sterility, and a sterile disposable guide that attaches to the bracket and aligns the needle with the ultrasound beam. We can now walk through the process of using this type of needle guide system while highlighting some of the clinical advantages and limitations. The first step is to attach the non-sterile bracket to the transducer. Be careful to align the bracket properly with the transducer and lock it into position. It is important to note brackets are transducer specific and therefore a different bracket will be necessary for each transducer. Remember the transducer brackets are not disposable and should be cleaned and retained after each use. In compliance with the American Institute of Ultrasound and Medicine's recommendation for managing infectious risk, the disinfected transducer should be covered with a sterile probe cover to reduce the risk of contamination and infection when using a method where direct touch of the transducer or gel to the point of needle entry is anticipated. Acoustic gel should be applied to the transducer before covering. When applying the cover, be careful to avoid contamination as the transducer and bracket are introduced into the cover. The cover is then extended over the transducer cord. As with any medical procedure, hand hygiene, sterile precautions, disinfecting, and cleaning equipment and the patient's environment are essential to prevent the spread of healthcare-associated infections. You are now ready to attach the sterile needle guide. The proper guide should be selected for the block needle gauge to be used in the procedure. The guide channels are designed to accommodate the needle while limiting free needle movement from side to side, keeping the needle in plane with the ultrasound beam. In this example, an 18-gauge guide has been chosen for use with a 21-gauge needle. Note the excess movement of the needle in the channel. In the second demonstration, a 21-gauge guide has been selected. Note how the needle is held more closely in plane with the ultrasound beam. Once the proper needle guide has been selected, using sterile technique, the clinician attaches the guide over the transducer cover to the bracket and transducer assembly. In many needle guide systems, the guide should be locked into place. Now the equipment is assembled. Skin preparation is performed over the anticipated anatomical area. In some institutions, a fenestrated drape is placed over the prep skin region. The transducer is applied to the patient and an ultrasound image of the target nerve is acquired. The target is appropriately visualized and positioned in the image, and the estimated needle path to the target is examined. The transducer is stabilized, and the clinician is ready to infiltrate the skin entry point with local anesthesia. Some clinicians use a long, fine-gauge needle that can be introduced through the needle guide to infiltrate the skin entry point. Others infiltrate the skin entry point after slightly tilting the transducer to expose the skin. The needle guide may partially obscure the skin entry point. Care should be taken to infiltrate the skin directly in the area of needle entry. Observe how the needle exits the guide and where it will enter the skin relative to the guide and transducer. Once the skin entry point is anesthetized and the target reacquired, the needle is placed within the guide channel and the skin is punctured the needle is advanced slightly. If the needle is not visible, a small adjustment in the tilt of the transducer should bring the needle into view. The needle is then advanced towards the target. 
Many needle guide systems allow the clinician to vary the angle of needle insertion into the patient. The guide maintains the needle in the ultrasound beam plane, while allowing the clinician to vary the angle of needle insertion to the proper trajectory for approaching the target. For a target approximately 1 to 2 centimeters deep, a very shallow needle angle will be necessary. In this demonstration, the clinician has partially advanced the needle through the guide. The needle angle is too steep to properly approach the target. The clinician lowers the angle of the needle within the guide before continuing to advance the needle. In some cases, the needle angle may be lowered so far that the needle is no longer in the channel. The guide was able to assist the clinician in entering the skin in the plane of the ultrasound beam and maintaining the needle in plane as the angle was lowered. Guiding needles to deep targets can be challenging. If the angle of the needle relative to the transducer is greater than 45 degrees, less energy is reflected from the needle and detected by the transducer, thus making the visualization more difficult. Although needle guides are extremely helpful in this situation, it is important to understand a few concepts. The channel in some guides direct the needle at approximately 45 degrees to the transducer when the needle is introduced flush to the channel guide. Common linear transducers are 3.5 to 4 centimeters in width. This means a needle advance flush to the guide will reach the center of the ultrasound image at a depth of about 2 centimeters. What can you do if the desired target depth is greater than 2 to 3 centimeters? The first option is to position the target closer to the side of the screen opposite the needle guide. This will allow for continued advancement of the needle in the channel past the center of the screen and approach a deeper target. This may only work for targets 3 to 3.5 centimeters deep. For deeper targets, the needle angle can be steepened within the guide channel. It is important to appreciate how the needle may no longer be flush with the guide and will change the skin entry point. When using this technique, it is important to identify the skin entry point and anesthetize this area before skin puncture. Remember, steep needle angles may make the needle more difficult to visualize on the ultrasound image. Another option is to tow in the transducer to produce a steeper needle angle. The needle is maintained flush to the guide, but pressure on the toe of the transducer is used to steepen the angle of needle entry. This technique has the advantage of keeping a shallower needle angle relative to the transducer, thus increasing visibility of the needle. Yet another option is to plan a shallower needle trajectory. However, this will require a skin entry point further away from the target. The channel is used to guide the needle entry point and initial needle advancement. The transducer and assembly are moved toward the target while maintaining the needle in view. The movement may cause the needle to no longer be in the guide. This may be unavoidable, and careful positioning of the transducer will be necessary to maintain a good view of the needle. Alternatively, a curvilinear low-frequency transducer can be considered to approach deep targets. Brackets are transducer-specific, and therefore a different bracket will be necessary to accommodate the curvilinear transducer. In some cases, a needle guide may not be able to be used. For example, in some clinical cases, it is desirable to locate the needle entry point several centimeters from the transducer, such as with a lateral popliteal fossa block. In this situation, the guide is distant from the entry point, and the needle would not be within the channel. The use of needle guides can create a few clinical challenges. The needle guide adds width to the transducer and may limit access in tight spaces. In addition, due to the open channel design of the guide, the needle length required to reach a target is increased by approximately 2 centimeters. When compared to the freehand technique, the guide restricts needle redirection into the tissue located in a different plane from the entry point. Proven clinical advantages of using a needle-guided technique compared to freehand techniques include a decrease in procedure time and improved needle tip and shaft visualization. In a randomized, controlled, and blinded study, the use of a variable angle needle guide significantly reduced the median time to complete a nerve targeting task in a partial task trainer. In addition, the use of a guide significantly improved obtaining an acceptable needle view during the task. Although difficult to prove, better needle visualization should increase patient safety. Other studies have examined the practical aspects of using needle guides. Dr. Clendenden, Dr. Robards, and Dr. Greengrass concluded needle guides were found to be easy to use, needle tracking was precise, 
and target location was accurate. As a fellowship trained regionalist, I've had the opportunity to work with multiple novice residents with and without the needle guide available to me. While I've tried other safety measures to minimize potential hazard to patients, using the guide provides needle stabilization and natural alignment as the residents learn the various needle angles and entry points and how that affects their trajectory. That helps soften the learning curve and build the residents' tactile and procedural knowledge as they learn the various nerve block techniques.